The Vanagon camper needs three things to run on propane. Plenty of fuel, the propane gas, the piezoelectric spark created by pushing the ignition button in all the way, and, most important of all, oxygen. If you know you've got gas, you can light the stove, you can hear it, you can smell it, or you've run on gas before, you can hear the spark, or you've heard the backfire because of too much propane, then the only thing missing is oxygen. When you push in the air pump button, does it feel like nothing's happening, no resistance, like what you'd feel when pumping a bicycle pump? Does the button wiggle around a lot? It could be that your 30-year-old air pump needs some attention. Long after these campers were sold, Volkswagen issued a service bulletin with instructions for refrigerator air supply modification to make starting on propane much easier. The good news, it's an easy fix. The bad news is you've got to remove the unit from the van just to do it. It's not that hard, and there's plenty of write-ups and how-to videos online, so I won't go into that. But once the unit's on a workbench, I'll show you how to repair and modify the hand-operated pump. The air pump is located at the top left front of the unit. It's made of plastic about the size of a large pill bottle. When the button is pushed in as far as it will go, the end of the shaft presses on this button, which creates a spark in the small combustion chamber at the rear of the unit. There are two problems which the factory suggested modification solves. It increases the pump's efficiency by eliminating the wiggle of the air piston inside the pump, and it adds a check valve so the air you're pumping keeps going into the combustion chamber rather than back and forth. To do this modification, you're going to need a couple of two to three inch pieces of small surgical type plastic tubing, sort of like these right here. A small aquarium type air pump check valve, like this one. A small three eighths inch to five eighths inch washer or o-ring of average thickness. A couple of small tie wraps, a drill bit and drill. You can get both the surgical style hose and the small check valve at any store that sells aquarium supplies. The valve and a scrap of hose shouldn't cost you more than a buck. Be sure you get the right kind of valve. Avoid the replacement kit that's sold online because it has the incorrect type of check valve. That's a check valve for water. You don't want this. This is what you want. It's a check valve for air. First, we'll remove the air pump from the refrigerator, tighten up the internal piston, and then very slightly enlarge the pump's air outlet. Disconnect the rubber hose from both the refrigerator and the air pump outlet. Next, remove the four screws which attach the air pump housing to the refrigerator. Remove the two screws at the rear of the air pump. Unscrew the air pump knob so you can disassemble the pump completely. After you remove the small circlip, all the pieces will come apart. You should have two large washers, the rubber air pump seal, and the circlip. Volkswagen engineers realized that most of the air escaped when you push the pump button because the rubber seal tended to wiggle or lean to one side of the shaft. The solution is to add an o-ring to tighten up the assembly and keep that rubber seal in place. Now the o-ring is nothing more than an average thickness small washer which fits snugly on the air pump shaft. The hole in the washer I wanted to use was too small so I held the washer with a pair of vice grips and slowly drilled the hole open. Using a bench vise, if I had one, would be even better. Now, when you reassemble the parts, including the new spacer, the rubber seal should be held tighter and less likely to allow air to slip by. Next, following the factory's suggestion, the outlet of the air pump should be slightly enlarged. Use the drill bit for this purpose. You may not even need to use a drill. Just spinning the bit with your fingers may be enough. It's such a small difference. And remember to clean out all the plastic dust. You don't want any of it going down to the combustion chamber behind the refrigerator. Reassemble the air pump and reattach it to the top of the refrigerator with the four screws. Take the two pieces of tubing and attach them to the check valve. But first blow through the check valve to make sure it's facing the right direction. Attach one end of the air pump outlet that you just drilled out. Attach the other end to the metal tube that runs back down to the combustion box at the bottom of the unit. Use the small tie wraps to complete the installation. There's a lot of basic maintenance and low-cost improvements you can make while the unit is out. Replacing the inadequate but noisy cooling fan with a new 12-volt computer fan is a great idea. The 120 millimeter aluminum fan by Evercool is a good choice. You can buy it online for about $10 to $12.
Drill a small hole through the bottom and use the same screw from the old fan to mount the new fan in the same place as the old one. Connect the wires that used to go to the old fan to the new one. This one fairly easy job is a big improvement. That's it for now. I'm John Thomas and I want to thank you for watching. And if you've got any questions or suggestions, please let me know. I always answer. It may take me a while, but I always do. Thanks for watching.